Hey everyone! Welcome again to the sewing room, or as G calls it, the command center. I'm just going to share a few things with you and go over another stitch tutorial. We have been uh, snowbound for weeks. I mean, I think since December 8th, <laughs> there has been snow on the ground. So we have been trapped here. Uh, and we've been shoveling and now we are preparing for the big melt. So that is the life that was December and now into January. With that means that there's lots of stitching time and I have been keeping up with my goals for the month and not feeling pressured and adding a few new things. So you might want to uh, stay up to date on the Wooly blog, uh, woollymammoth.blogspot.com or on the Quilt Show uh, daily blog, Anna and G on the Road. Unfortunately, we still are not on the road because our RV is trapped by a huge ice berm. So it'll be a few, probably a month or so, before we get out of here, maybe two months, but we have lots of plans ahead of us. So one of the things that I decided to start was a block of the month. It's through Homestead Hearth, and it is by Edita Sitar, and it is her pumpkins. Now the reason I do a block of the month is because I'm kind of a primitive girl, and I don't really have a lot of uh, this type of fabric in my stash. So it, it's a great way for me to taste a little bit of something new without having to go out and buy large amounts of yardage. The way I did that, uh, I knew that Edita on her pattern fused her pieces and so I knew I was going to do that also. I wasn't going to needle turn all this. And because I was going to um, be stitching my pieces down, I used, again, my favorite product, SF101, which is a fusible Pellon product, as a base for my cotton. And then I used um, a fusible web and cut my pieces out and fused them on. The thing about this is what I've learned when I was more of a long arm quilter was that the color khaki in thread pretty much blends with any fabric. So I decided I was not going to change colors every time I came to a new color uh, of pumpkin. I was going to use khaki thread for my um, stitching down uh, my pieces in here. So. I did that and it looks great. I used the smallest buttonhole stitch I could uh, program into my sewing machine and I used khaki in the bottom and the top thread and then I just went around and they turned out perfect. So I'm kind of excited about this project because it's not something I would have had in my um, my stash closet. It's something new. So every month I get five pumpkins. Now the reason I only have four done here is because the um, Homestead Hearth accidentally put the wrong background in for the fifth pumpkin, but they are including it in next month. So I'll have six pumpkins to do next month. With that, I move on to some old projects. I have been digging around and I found a, a Halloween project that I just hadn't put the inner border or outer border on. So that's what I'm going to show you next. So this was made at a class that I took at the Stitch and Post here in Sisters. And it's this kind of whirly gig. You use a special ruler. And then I made the inside and, and never went beyond that. But now I'm going to have this done for this Halloween. So I decided on this fun little orange stripe for the inner border. And I'm going to take this black Kona black, um, which... Uh, I have a bolt of. I buy bolts of some fabrics because you can get them at like 40% off um, if you're using a lot of one fabric. Um, usually at Fabric Depot or Joann's, uh, a Kona Black. 
So I always keep a, a bolt of that around. And that is what I'm going to use as my outside border, which will probably be about a four inch border. And then I'm going to quilt some bats around there. So this thing is going to get done this year, which I'm kind of excited to start quilting away at some of my uh, projects that have been sitting around here. Because isn't that the way? We, we just want to learn something new and make a top, and then that's it. We never get it beyond that, but now I'm ready to get them beyond. And so now we're on to our stitch tutorial. Stitch tutorial. I have this project that's been, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to keep saying this. I have this project that's been hanging around forever, but yes, I do. I have a, a project that's been hanging around. And this was a class I took with Tony Belinda Phillips and Sue Spargo. And I am out to stitching my flowers. And I thought a great way to motivate myself is to put on my goals list, although I didn't write it on the January goal because I just thought of this a couple of days ago, to stitch one flower a month. And so I would get this done this year sometime if I just did no pressure, just one flower a month. I know I can do one flower a month. And by teaching you uh, a stitch, it's a double bonus. So I use Sue Spargo's book, her um, creative stitching book. I got that at the Stitch and Post. And we're going to do the scroll stitch. The thing about this is I'm trying to figure out what I can do that will enhance the piece, make it pop, and work in these tight quarters of the petals. And I did make the decision that whatever I stitch on this flower, on its reverse flower, I would do the same type of stitching. So here on this flower, I've done bullion stitches and um, some French knots, so I'm going to do those same stitches on this flower, which is the reverse color of that one. So the scroll stitch is an outline stitch, and I want to outline these petals, and I thought, why do I have to stick to a purple color? Because this is a purple flower. I'm going to do this fun thread. And it is an Eleganza pearl, which is one of Sue Spargo's threads, number five. And I'm going to show you this scroll stitch. So I have my thread. I'm going to go from the outside edge of my petal and just take a bite to the inside edge. Then I'm going to bring my thread underneath the needle and around the top so it goes underneath the point. And then I'm going to hold it and pull that needle. And then I pull the thread back and it makes the scroll stitch. So next, I'm trying to keep the same distance between each stitch, so there's kind of a consistency. So again, I'm going to go into the edge of my petal and just take a little bite. My thread is going to come under my needle and go underneath the point. Then I'm going to hold it and pull my needle as I hold that thread and then I pull my thread back and there it is. One more time taking a bite bringing my thread underneath my needle and then underneath the point I'm going to hold the thread, push the needle through, and pull it, and then pull back so it stays on the edge. So I think that's going to look really cool, and with this variegated green and purple thread, I think it'll add a fun 
fun little edging to this flower. And then I'm going to do something different with the inner flower, but that'll come out another day. So that's the chapter for today in the Command Center. We are really excited though with our latest news. Our youngest son and his wife are expecting a, a baby boy and now we know the sex of the baby. So it makes shopping and, and sewing much more efficient I think to know the sex. We never had that option but I'm pretty happy about it. So until next time, keep stitching. <laughs>